There's several things I want to talk about this morning. One of the primary things is just my job. I want to talk to you about my job. My job is a pastor, a preacher, a teacher, a prophet, an evangelist, so forth. This is what I do. I don't think it needs a heavy explanation, but I think for some people maybe it does. And, you know, people can say, okay, well, you sound like you're getting personal. Maybe I am. Um, I feel like one, one thing I have noticed in my life is if you don't set the standard, people will run over you. And people will take you for granted. And people will take you as a pushover. So one thing I have seen is the ability, and I have definitely taken advantage of it in ministry, the, this ability in media. To reach people through YouTube, Facebook, any type of social media, uh, I have learned that it is something that must be capitalized on. And that is what I do. That is what I do with Facebook. That's what me and my wife do. This is what we're about. But let me just focus one second on my job as a pastor, a preacher, a teacher. But I want to emphasize about my job, about what I do. Because I feel like where people get carried away is they, a lot of folks are quick to say, well, you're just judging me. Or you're saying that I'm going to hell. Or all these other things. When, you know, it, it hurts me because at the end of the day, I'm only teaching what's in the Word of God. I only live by what's in the Word of God. Now, to say I don't have struggles, it would be a lie. To say I don't go through anything would be a lie. To say that I have not dealt with certain sins or sin itself would be a lie. But people think because you use the Word of God or you correct them or you rebuke them, as some people say, or whatever the case may be, they feel like, well, you're judging me, you're telling me I'm going to hell, and who are you to tell me this? So, and then people want to use this verse of, well, the person without sin cast the first stone. One, here's my question. If that's the case, now first off, it's talking about stones. I'm not throwing stones at nobody. I'm just simply saying, hey, look, this is what the Word of God says. If this is what the Word of God says, this is what we ought to be doing. Period. I mean, my thing is, if the authority of God, if we still put stock in God and we still love him so much and we say we love him and we say we adore him and we say we serve him, then how are we serving him? How are we loving him? How are we doing any of this when we're disobeying him, when we are blatantly disobeying him, when we're blatantly going out against him? How are we serving him? How are we good servants? How are we following God when we keep bucking up against Him? But yet we say we love Him so much. We say we appreciate the sacrifice He made and all this other stuff. But yet we don't want to make a sacrifice ourselves. And we don't want to be obedient. Many of us would rather be rebellious. This is where I want us to be. And I want you to understand, as partners of our ministry, of friends of mine, of people who know me or who are associated with me, understand something clear. I will not budge what I believe in Christ Jesus. I'm not going to budge. You can try to shake me. You can try to do all these things. I will not budge. And just because there are people that want to compromise their salvation, that want to compromise their intimacy with God. Okay, let, let's 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 break it down for a minute. Let's look at something. Okay, so if I go out and cheat on Ashanti today, that's my wife. If I go out and cheat on her, then I'm compromising our marriage. I'm compromising our intimacy. Right? Okay. Now, 
Let's take it a step further. You are married to God. If you're saved, if you're born again, all these things that a lot of us say we are, but don't really live out. If we are that, if we are that, then listen. Every time, every time we disobey him, every time we turn our back on him, every time we turn our back on him, every time we go in the opposite direction of where he wants us to go, we're committing adultery on him. We're cheating on him. And we're jeopardizing our relationship with him, our intimacy with him. Why would you not want to have an intact, full, whole relationship with the one who created you, the one who put life into you, and the one who takes life from you? He created us. Why would we not want that? So, with all this being said, I urge all of you who may have a mindset of, well, the preacher just wants the worst for me. We watched, me and my wife watched a video last night where the preacher was trying to steal from everybody, basically. I'm not trying to steal from anybody. Most of the preachers that have a good heart and are serious about this, they're not trying to steal from anybody. They're trying to save you. They're trying to get you saved. They're trying to give you the truth and get you saved. You got a lot of pastors that are out here trying to control you, manipulate you, give you positions. By God, I mean, give you all the positions you could desire. Give you all the accolades and degrees and titles and plaques that you could desire. But at the end of the day, where are you with Christ? Where are you with Christ? You got and, and, and look, I hold no apologies and I hold no sympathy. If you get mad at me, if you're watching this and you get offended, so be it. I'm not here to make friends. I'm not here to take sides. I had a pastor say one time, I'm not here to take sides. I'm here to take over. That's who I am. Because if you want to say I'm on a side, I'm on the winning side. I'm on God's side. That's who I work for. That's what I do. And my sole purpose, my sole concern is to see people saved. And to see people in right fellowship and in right standing with Jesus Christ. That's what I'm here to do. So if you got a problem with that, you can delete me off of Facebook. You can leave me alone if you want. And you can keep on talking about me. Because honestly, as long as you're talking about me, as long as you're talking junk, saying he's super spiritual and he's this and he's that. And he just thinks he's all that. As long as you're doing that, I know I'm doing something right. And to let you know, to clear the air, I don't think I'm all that. My wife will tell you all the nights, all the times where I have cried, where I have started bawling. With my struggles, with my insecurities, with the things I go through on a daily basis. So to say I don't struggle, to say that I don't fight with God would be a lie. Because I do. And I do often. But at the end of the day, this is my job. This is what I do. This is my duty. This is what I've been called and chosen to do. I'm not going to compromise that just because some people are dissatisfied. I'm not going to compromise my calling, my purpose, just because you don't like what I got to say. Especially when what I got to say is coming straight from the Bible. It's up to you. It is up to you. If you don't want to live up to the standard of the Word of God, you don't have to. That is your choice. 
so be it. But it's for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. And as for me and my ministry, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my marriage, for me and my wife, we will serve the Lord. All the way around, we will serve the Lord. Period. That's it. It is my prayer for all of you that are watching this. It is my prayer that you get it right with God. That's my prayer. It is my prayer that you start looking at the Word of God as holy once again. Not just the Bible, but the Holy Bible. It would be good to see that again. It would be good for us to look at God as a holy God and understand that we are to walk in righteousness, that we are to walk in holiness. That we are to live by Christ's example. That would be great to see. And that is my prayer for you. So with all this being said, before you come at me, and before you come at any other pastor, and say, hey, look, you're being too judgmental. And you're just, you're just too you're you're just too down the middle. And you just you just talk the word of God in such a gritty way. Like you just got a knife and you're stabbing everybody and cutting everybody's heart out. Before you come at me or any other pastor or teacher at a Bible college or anybody else that way again. Take a look at yourself for a minute. And ask yourself the question. Do I have a right to buck up against their authority? And do I have a right to sit back and question what the Word of God is saying? Now, don't misunderstand me. Balance it all against the Word of God. And don't just use that one verse, the one without sin, cast the first stone. That ain't good enough. That ain't good enough. You talk about judgment, okay? There's also a place in the Bible that says if you judge, judge rightly. There's also a place where it says we're to edify one another. Now, there's a right way and a wrong way to do that, and I understand that. And some of us are stronger in language. Some of us are stronger the way we come across. I understand that, too. But here's the thing. If you're in the Army, which I've never been in the Army, but I've heard about a lot of people who did. My uncle was in the Marines. He told me about his sergeant. He told me about what it was like. If he did wrong, guess what? You're getting punched in the stomach, punched in the chest. You're going to drop and give me 200. That's what it was like. And that's what it's like in the kingdom. So, you know, you mean to tell me that there can't be no correction? And the Bible even says for children, the spare, the spare the rod, spoil the child. Is that right? Oh. So what about us? Now, we're his children, so what more do you think he expects of us? And we're to edify one another. And I'm not saying that we have a monopoly on the Holy Spirit, because there's a lot of pastors going around thinking, I have a monopoly on the Holy Spirit, and what I say is, period. And that ain't right either, especially when a lot of what they say is not even in the Word of God in the first place. Remember this in everything. Weigh it against the Word of God. Weigh it, get in that Word of God and look at it for yourself. There was a song. You better let your fingers do the walking through God's Word. You got to read it for yourself. Don't depend on what you've heard. Don't depend on what you've heard. Weigh what you've heard against the Word. When you weigh what you've heard against the word, you can understand for yourself. And you can see for yourself, you're wrong, my wrong, their wrong. What is the truth? And you can see the truth for yourself. Stop depending on everybody to give you the truth when a lot of people are telling you lies. And I have watched it. I have watched it. Listen to me. I have watched it. I could. I've watched it. There are many churches right now giving out lies. Giving out 
lies, distorting the word of truth, distorting God's word, and manipulating people to a point where it's all about them. But the truth is, it's not all about them. It's all about the kingdom. It's all about Jesus Christ. And until we get to that point of understanding, this is all about Jesus. Now you tell me something. When you tell me how God can get the glory out of you going to the club on Saturday night, when you tell me how God can get the glory out of you committing adultery, if you tell me how God can get the glory out of going to the ABC store. If you tell me how God can get the glory by you looking in front of the computer and lusting over some pornography. Tell me how unnatural relationships can bring glory to God. Tell me all of this stuff. How does any of this bring glory to God? What he said. This is what it's about. If it does not bring glory to him, you shouldn't be doing it. I shouldn't be doing it. We shouldn't be doing it. That's it. Final. If it's not about Jesus, if it doesn't compliment Jesus, if it don't make Jesus look good, we shouldn't be doing it. And I think that's a good way to look at it. But like I said, in everything, weigh it against the word of God. Weigh it against the word of God. When you do that, you can't fail. And maybe pray once in a while. That might be good, since most of us really don't pray like we should. But we'll spend time doing everything else but won't pray. Again, this is my job, and I think you can tell. I think you can tell. This is my job. This is what I do. This is how I live. This is what I live for. This is what I breathe for. And I hold no apologies for anyone who has a problem with it. For those of you who are watching and you do have a problem with it, like I said, you don't have to deal with me. There's a whole lot of people that's got a problem with Jesus and they ain't dealing with him either. But remember this, what you do unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you do also unto me. And remember this, there are people in the pulpit who do represent Christ, who actually do represent Christ, who, didn't get, who did not get there through false methods, who didn't get there because they're a hustler in the spirit. They didn't get there because they lied their way to the top or slept their way to the top or whatever it is. There's a lot of people there who proclaim the word of God and they live the word of God. So this is my prayer. For those of you who think me along with many others are just too judgmental, too super spiritual, or whatever word you want to tag on us. Take a look again and understand the job we have. Nobody said this was an easy job. It is painful to watch people in bondage. It is painful. It's disturbing to watch people in bondage, especially in our country right now. It is painful to watch people in bondage. It is painful to watch people coping with their hurt in unholy ways, in negative ways, in unhealthy ways, ways that will eventually kill them or could kill them. It is painful for a preacher to watch these things when you know the body of Christ could do more. But right now, see, the body of Christ is working against itself so much by people who say the pastor is wrong, the word of God is wrong because it's being judgmental. 
It says, I can't take part in the culture. Have you ever thought that maybe you're not supposed to take part in the culture? Have you ever read that verse that says, be ye separate or be ye holy for I am holy? And then we want to say, well, Jesus sat with the sinners. Okay, but he wasn't a sinner now, was he? So here's the question. You sit down with sinners, but are you a sinner in the midst of sinners? Or are you holy in the midst of sinners? That's a good way to look at it. If you're going to go into a group of sinners and do what the sinners do, okay, Really? How is that Christ-like? So, if you have actually taken time to listen to this, which I hope you have, I really hope you have, and, and, and you may say, well, it's a little much, too much to hear. That's too much to take in, which is usually the case because most people don't want to listen to anything for more than five minutes. They don't want to listen to anything more than five minutes, and that's why. So many people are lost right now because we don't want to take time. I hope you took time to listen to it. I hope you took it in. hope it made sense. hope it maybe gave you a better understanding of where I come from, where other pastors and teachers come from, of saying, hey, look, this is my job. And I'm not condemning anybody. I'm not condemning anybody. I'm not telling anybody they're going to hell. I'm just saying, hey, look, here's some things we need to work on. Here's some things that isn't lining up with the Word of God. Here's some things that in order for us to be in good fellowship with Him and in good standing with Him, we need to expunge some things out of our life, some habits, some activities, some lifestyles. We need to expunge some things so that we're not an enemy of God, thinking that we are his closest. Judas felt like he was a friend of God, and he betrayed him. Here's my thing. Don't be a Judas in your relationship with Christ. Don't be a Judas in your relationship with Christ. Don't keep stabbing him in the back. It even says that every time we sin and every time we back away from him, we crucify him anew. We crucify him afresh. We crucify him again. That alone ought to tell you something. You love him so much, why are you putting him through so much pain? Again, and again, and again. Again, I'm a pastor, a preacher, a teacher, a prophet, an evangelist. I think that pretty much covers it. And there's a lot of other great men and women of God that I know the same way. And get judged every day because they teach the word of God. They teach the truth. And they live the truth and people just don't get it. So they talk about it. I hope and pray that you find your peace with God. I hope and pray That you can learn to deal with men and women of God in a way that is respectful once again. I think it's amazing. There was once a time where the preacher was respected more than the doctor and more than the lawyer. Where is that respect now? That's my question. But with all this being said, I said it in love, and I say it in love, and I send it in love.
It is my prayer that everyone who sees this and listens to this finds peace with God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much. We're quick to give you the glory and the praise. We ask that you touch everyone that watches this video. Minister to them in ways that I cannot. Minister to them in ways that no other minister can reach them. And help them to grasp hold of your peace, of your freedom. And to know that men and women of God everywhere that are truly after you are only trying to do what's best for you and for the folks around them that need healing, that need freedom. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. Touch every person watching in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Take care.